What's good, fam? Welcome back to the Underground Treehouse Podcast, a podcast that discusses and reviews music of all genres. I am one fourth of your host, Ruben. Joining me as always is Keenan. What up? Marcos. Hi. And no Isaac today. No Isaac today, unfortunately. Oof. He wasn't able to make it. Uh, but no worries. He'll be back next week, locked and loaded. Uh, but we're going to keep it pushing with this review of Joey Badass's third studio album, 2000, a follow-up <laughs> to his uh, debut mixtape, 1999. But before we get into all that... As always, we'll start with our music recommendations of the week, as well as our local beer recommendations of the week. Uh, Marco, start us off with the music. My recommendation for music is a band that we recently just saw in concert that I couldn't stop playing because they went so fucking hard. It's called Show Me The Body. Uh, I've been listening to them for a while, and then after the concert, I just want to listen to them a lot more because they're so hardcore. And the, <laughs> the lead singer is uh actually like ruthless and the motherfucker comes out with the fucking <laughs> banjo dog how much hardcore can you get so yeah show me the body camp orchestra is a sick ass song so if you need to listen to a song by them is camp orchestra <laughs> camp orchestra cool that's a good song survive is probably my favorite but then i really like canine Oof. canine is so fucking hard Oof. that that, that was, was that was such a fun show that was they had to follow soul glow yeah and that crowd alone was insane yeah no one was safe in that crowd that was a lot more hardcore than i expected i didn't think it was gonna be that violent oh man right and then for show me the body to have to follow that yeah energy and they matched it oh man even surpassed it during a couple songs Mm -hmm. yeah no that was insane that show was insane oh dude it's so much fun shout out to isaac for getting his uh his phone knocked (laughs) by the lead singer singer. (laughs) yep yep at least he got his phone knocked i need to get pushed into like the PA system, the PA system, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like some other goofball that they just posted a video of. Yeah, some guy that got pushed by the lead singer of Show Me the Body into a PA system, and he just he's down bad, bro. We gotta post it. Oh yeah, we'll, we'll have to post we'll it. Post we'll it on. Post. We'll post it on the gram. We'll post the comparison. Who got it worse, Isaac getting his phone knocked or the dude who got pushed into the PA system? <laughs> yeah, right. Let us know on the gram. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get a poll. We'll get a poll going between the well, two. Well, if you see the video, the guy's recording, and then when he gets pushed, his phone just goes flying. So <laughs> he took two hours. He got he pushed into the PA system or three, and then he fell down, and then he lost his phone. Ooh, Ooh. Get it. Three fucking hours. <laughs> My recommendation is the song Survival is Vengeance by New York hardcore band Mind Force. Mm -hmm. They just released this new single for their upcoming album. So this just dropped uh, July 22nd. And if you're not familiar with Mind Force, please get on it. Very thrash heavy, hardcore. Um, Very fun. I'm so excited for this album. Can't wait. My recommendation of the week is going to be the new single by the uh, R&B group Division called if i get caught um i guess i don't really have too much to say about it it's just you know you're kind of run-of-the-mill toxic ass r&b club banger but it's really good uh apparently they have an album coming in 2022 i don't think there's been any uh you know formal release date or anything like that if so i would imagine this is the first single that was you know that would be released for it um and if it is and this is the kind of sound that we're going for i think it'll be cool i think it'll sound really good uh somewhat akin to like the brent fires you know, Brent Fias gets fucking called toxic all the time. So this, this, this is the same kind of shit, honestly. Uh, it was just smooth, man. Stuff to vibe out to. Play in the club, play in the car. Great song. Again, If I Get Caught by Division. All right. Our local beer recommendation of the week was going to be from La Cumbre. It's going to be the beer. That's all <laughs> it's yeah. called. Yeah, the it's aptly called beer. named beer. It's, you know, it's all in the title. Nothing fancy. Just your straight run of the mill beer. But don't get it twisted. Just because it's normal does not mean it Oof. falters in any way, shape, or form as far as the taste goes. Yep. It's a beautiful beer. Beautiful. Um, there's some uh, beers that, you know, don't taste as good uh, when they're not in tap. Like when they're cans. packaged? Yeah, when they're packaged. But this one fucking is really good. Oh, man. This one's delicious. Yeah, it's really good. This one's delicious. Uh, right here, 2011, they won the gold medal in the uh, the 2011 Great American Beer Festival. They got a gold medal go. for this. We beer. got a gold medal beer on the podcast tonight. Yeah. Thank you, Lacumbre. Thank you, Lacumbre. Shout they're out, Lacumbre. Cheers, boys. Cheers. Cheers. Shout out to Isaac too. Cheers Shout to you, Isaac, Isaac, if you're hearing us right now. Yeah, we'll be cheersing with him soon enough. We miss you, baby. I don't know about all that, but <laughs> getting into the review, 2000 
by Joey Badass. Marcos, this pick, uh, go ahead and explain why you picked this. Well, because Joey Badass is one of my favorite artists from the new generation, I mm-hmm. guess. Uh, OG ass fucking New York rapper. So, uh, of course, when I heard that he was finally, after many delays, that he finally dropped 2000, I was like, right, well, it's either going to be this or Lupe Fiasco or uh, Sabrina Carpenter. And I have to go with my OG ever since uh, Pro Era, bro, the early days of Pro Era. So, based off the title 2000, uh, it seemed like this was going to be kind of like a somewhat of a spiritual successor to his debut mixtape 1999, which is regarded by many to be like one of the best mixtapes ever made. Um, not only in name, but this year is also the 10 year anniversary of 1999 coming out. Yeah. So, it seemed like there's a couple dots, you know, connecting the two. Um, so, I mean, Marcos, I know you're familiar with 1999. I know you weren't Keenan before this. No, not at all. You you went back and revisited 1999 though. So I yeah I actually I think I listened to 1999 more than 2000 this week. Oh shit. So yeah, just to educate myself, I did go back. Okay. And listen to it. And what do you think? What do you think about survival tactics? Oof! I was actually telling Ruben this the other day. <laughs> I would not let that song finish. I kept restarting it. It was so hard. That song so. St- Dumb and so hard, like dude. i told ruben i was like yo i think i was onto something and i went and looked and it was actually like one of his like top five like most popular songs and i was like ah shit well that <laughs> makes sense this song is hard yeah, yeah man so good survival uh tactics is definitely a certified classic and it made the playlist of hell course it yeah did. it always does said, of course dude. it did <laughs> the whole mix they pretty much does sorry man. i'm a whole decade late to the party y'all. <laughs> hey it doesn't matter as long as you show up as long yeah, as you show like up a decade huh it came out what yeah saying, like, 2012 yeah 2012. it's been a full 10 years yeah. Full 10 years, man. So, you know, me and you, Marcos, being familiar with 1999 and you, Keenan, uh, listening to it. Did you guys have any certain expectations going into 2000 uh, based on the connections between the two projects? Did you have any type of like preconceived notions? Because I definitely did. Yeah, fuck yeah, I did. 1999 is one of my top five favorite mixes of all time. And then waiting five years to hear another solo album from Joy Bass and knowing that it's a kind of like intertwined with 1999 i was super stoked to hear about it mm-hmm. and then after so many delays uh this album got i don't know i think it got like three or four delays on it mm-hmm. i was like yo this thing better you know i, ha- I have high expectations for it and see for me i think i differ from you guys because you guys have that you know 10 year anticipation if it is going to be you know um the the counterpart to 1999 mm-hmm. um and or whereas like you know just the five year of just anything solo by him mm-hmm. whereas literally i listened to all of this like during this week so i oh. kind of expected like maybe like some references mm-hmm. but as far as like the anticipation i'm just not at that level with you guys right okay uh i'm with you marco so i had the you know the connection between 2000 and 1999 you know it was you know what it kind of felt like it kind of felt like when hip-hop artists um like take eminem for example like when he drops like the Marshall Mathers LP two, you know what yeah. I mean? Like I'm going back to my roots. You know what I mean? Like I ventured off and I did this other shit. Now I'm gonna go back to like what made me an artist and what like really put me on the spotlight. So that's kind of what I felt like he was going to be doing with this. So I was like, Oh shit. Okay. So I was expecting to get some like real grimy New York beats, you know, uh, basically 1999 2.0 is what I was expecting. Wow. Um, so just to throw a debate out there, don't you think the beats are kind of New York grimy kind of in a way? I mean, you got Static Selecta on here on majority of the beats. Yeah, that's true. No, Static Selecta did his fucking thing on this album. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't dude. think the beats were part of the problem. I think it was Joey trying to get back to his roots because he does not have that same flow that he did on 1999. Right, right. Well, I think you could definitely tell he's evolved as an artist. You know, he's definitely a lot more mature. And I think you hear the maturity a lot more in the beats, too. Um you know, and a lot of these beats, you know, they're not super polished or anything. You know, it's not like we're getting we, we got maybe two or three songs that are like this super squeaky clean, like radio kind of hits. But other than that, I mean, like you said, Static Selective laid down some super nice boom bap type beats. You know, Chuck Strangers had a great beat. Um, Kirk Will, Knight. Yeah, Mike Will made it. Yeah, Mike Will made it. I mean, so it, it, it seems like it's more of like a matured sound for him. You know what I mean? It, it's like. It's like the grown-up version of 1999, <laughs> if that makes sense. Okay. It literally is. <laughs> yeah. This is, man's a whole 10 years older. <laughs> yeah, so, right. So, so let's, 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 uh, let's debate on this really quick. Would you think that he was trying to go back to his roots 
on this album? Do you do, wait? Are you asking? Yeah, do, do I you, think he yeah, did? Do you think, or do you both? Do you guys think? I don't know if you've heard him enough from 1999. Like, do you think he was trying to go back to 1999? Like that kind of no, or you think he's okay? Like he was trying to actually, you know, um, hit the target on it, like showing a maturity, mature sign of the growth that he's kind of. Yes, right there, like the like showing his growth. Because that's actually what I did pull away from the two, obviously, okay. because you you have this 17 year old talking about, you know, trying to make it, trying to get there, you know, and then now in 2000, literally a lot of these songs are just like, just like his glamorous life now. Yeah. What's yeah. that song called? It's uh, actually like he's made it. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of like what the album, that's not kind of like, that's what the album gives off. Especially mm-hmm. like with with a lot of his lyrics. I mean, yeah, uh, I mean, a lot of it is, you know, like like you said, Keenan, it's very like braggadocious. You know, it's very, oh yeah, uh, like like you said, he made it, so yeah. now he, now he's you know gonna be bragging about it. So one of the things that I don't think I really fuck with too much on this is like I, I understand it's in the nature of hip hop, you know, to be braggadocious, and mm-hmm. I understand you know a lot of hip hop um, is you know very image based. Um, but he kind of has some comparisons and, you know, the, the whole comparison of him throwing himself in the top three with Kendrick and J. Cole. And then just like the constant, like shout outs from like Nas, which is cool, but you know, all these constant little like shout outs from Nas and Diddy and, you know, whoever else, like at the end of these tracks, these little skits is being like, yo, Joey badass man, fucking OG. He's been in the fucking game. It's like. I feel like we kind of got it after the first instance, which was off the baddest with Diddy. I, I just, I, don't, I didn't understand the need for him to feel like he needs to like throw it in our face so much. You, like, do you get what I'm saying? It, it just felt like so unnecessary. Yeah. Well, I mean, you could make it even before the album. You can make that point even before that one, whenever Hove put him on, you know, whenever Hove signed, co-signed him. Mm-hmm. I mean, that that's it. That's enough, dude. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, now that he has P Diddy and Nas, and he has someone else, right? I forgot who else he has. Absol? I know Absol says one of the last. Oh, on Survivor's Guilt. Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of like a shout out. Because he's, cause, uh, he's basically like telling the story about how he like got in with Pro Era or like when he first met them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then how he like it came full circle and then how somebody asked him if he knew Capital Steez. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess that's another cosign too is through Absol. Cool. So, um, but I think that I think that Absol one is a little different. Oh, okay. Because it, because that's like a, a direct reference to like Capital C's and it ties in with the song, whereas all the other ones are like, "Yo, fuck a Joey badass." You know what I mean? It's just so like, okay, we get it. Like, and it's you no, know, it's it's Diddy and Nas, like two le- legends. Absol yeah, is a legend, so. yeah. I don't okay. really give a fuck what Diddy has to say, but <laughs> Nas, yeah, I get it. I get it. <laughs> like I said, it's it, it's just the whole. It's the whole hip hop bravado kind of image, you know, like like throwing yourself top three with with fucking uh, Kendrick Lamar and J Cole. It's just like, but <sighs> to be fair, he has never been like this. Like the last uh, album came out was American uh, All American Badass, All American Badass, and it was all about you know pretty much politics. He's never really that's true. I mean, Paper Trails, I guess, off before the money and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. still, that wasn't as you know as showing off as. He has a lot in, in this uh, in this album, so no, he was talking his shit in this album. Yeah, man. so it's, it did seem like that. Yeah. So because you guys are, I mean, you guys are definitely more familiar with all three of those <laughs> <laughs> of those artists compared to me. So it was the hype for this album. As like, was there no, was there as much hype as like uh, you know like the Kendrick or Cole album? In my opinion, I would have I would be more hyped if I didn't listen to this album already. I would have been more hyped for this album than uh what's it mr mr morale yeah yeah and i don't know j cole's last album but um i would have been more hyped for this uh-huh. than really Kendrick's next project and j cole's next. 100 i prefer joey badass over both of them damn okay i i think the overall consensus is no no <laughs> yeah yeah i i think uh you know because so so take take this for instance you know this is his first project in five years right and kendrick's last album was also his first project in five years Mm -hmm. and as soon as kendrick announced his shit as soon as he announced mr morale like social media was blowing up and it was being advertised everywhere and the the hype for it was so extreme like people were having fucking listening parties to this shit at midnight when it dropped you know oh 
And then when Joey Badass announced his, it's not like nobody cared, but it was just like, you know, the, it just it doesn't have there. that same hype. Yeah, yeah, that's why I think that's like such an egregious fucking like pedestal to put yourself on, you know? But why is that? It's not like he's not on their level skill wise or writing wise. Like he is there. Like he, this mm-hmm. motherfucker, he could he could write and he could flow. But why is it then? He just doesn't market himself really good. Doesn't market himself good enough. Like why I, is it? I think it could maybe be a marketing thing too, for sure. I think his music just doesn't have that big mainstream appeal. Um, which I think is a good segue into like the songs on here. The very few that do have so I have a mainstream appeal. So I have a hot take. I mean, Kendrick's really isn't either. Yeah, but he. Yeah, I guess so. Damn, damn was not a good project. I, I liked it. It was not. I thought that was it was right. not. It was not like a top Kendrick project. Like what people were expecting. Like it wasn't. It didn't hit. It didn't right. hit the mark. But it had those. It had the mainstream appeal. Like love was fucking all over the yeah, radio. But, yeah, but what we're talking about is like Kendrick getting that audience. Like I don't think he deserves. You know, hot take. Damn. I don't think, I don't think he deserves holy the, shit. The motherfucker <laughs> sold like three hundred and fifty thousand uh, uh, in one week. Yeah. Like I don't think it's that good to it for it to sell but people want to listen to what they what they want to listen to i think you know this deserves more than that and i think the thing with like kendrick is he like his music it it it, it captures everybody you know what i mean like joey badass like his music is more so just strictly straight hip-hop you yeah. know if you're a hip-hop head you'll like it and you'll get you know a couple outliers here and there whereas kendrick you like he makes music for the hip-hop heads and then he makes music for the mainstream audience and then he makes music for like the woke community like yeah he, joey badass just doesn't have that same type of reach with his music so yeah so i i think that's a good segue uh into the into these couple tracks that i want to talk about um so despite it having again a more mature sound we do get a little bit of that like boom bap type of like 80s 90s hip-hop oh yeah um tell um, us tell us the first the first verse <laughs> On this album, bro. The oh, that's first, your, your favorite. No, verse. I would tell you the first line comes from fucking Diddy. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Diddy. The very first lyrics he has is, "Oh, you ain't know I could play the piano, did you?" <laughs> I what? I thought we were getting like, <laughs> where the fuck did this come from? <laughs> like, Diddy, we don't care, bro. <laughs> Dude, we do not care. And then, <laughs> can you stay New York City? That's kind of hard because it, it's it's kind of like setting up Joey Badass and. Yeah. I mean, the baddest is actually a, a really nice intro. Like, it, and it's just Joey coming in hot, yeah, you know, spitting, bro. Yeah, I can take five years off because my shit is timeless. That <laughs> that shit is nice. But yeah, so two songs that I really want to talk about, um, because they're definitely the outliers, are um, "Cruise Control" and "Welcome Back" with uh, Capella Gray and Chris Brown. Uh, I think "Cruise Control" actually kind of does the pop the pop sound decently. Uh, the hook on it is great. And it's just like a nice little boppy kind of like summertime hip hop song. Uh, actually, really fuck that song. Uh, yeah, that's the one that Mike Will Mike Will made it produced. Oh, he produced that yeah, one. That's uh, okay. Yeah, I mean it makes sense. It's a great song. When he says it was all a dream, came in at seventeen. Me and my pro aero team focus on better things. Yeah, man. And yeah. they hit it. You know, it's funny that he mentions pro aero and like steez a lot in this album, but he doesn't have one one fucking feature from anyone from pro aero. Yeah, actually, yeah, I. I'm glad you brought that up. He does have Chuck Strangers and Kirk Knight on this, and they're they're you know original Pro Era members. Um, yeah, but there's not verses. But yeah, there's no verses. I mean, Nick Caution dropped something earlier this year. Uh, Diamond Lewis, I love Diamond Lewis. I don't know what the fuck happens to that dude. Um, but uh, yeah, it would have been nice. So I actually read his uh, uh, "Ask Me Anything" on Reddit, and uh, somebody asked him like, "Yo, how come there wasn't?" So 1999 ends on a big posse cut with Pro Era, and he was like, "Did you?" You know, were you thinking of maybe doing something similar in 2000? And he said that, you know, him and the Pro Era like, crew just aren't close anymore. And they all live in different states. And he said he tried. that He tried to reach out, but he was just saying it just didn't work. So I guess that's his reasoning for not having any Pro Era verses. But I think he should have, you know. If, if the concept is tying back to 1999, you know, it's well, you kind gotta of an think oversight. If you really but... want it to work, you'll, you'll make it work. This exactly. Is, he, you right. delayed the album, like, three times, man, like... You know, if you really wanted to have pro, if you could make it and you wanted it to make it happen, it would have happened. I agree, definitely. But and I honestly think it would have made this album a whole lot better. Yeah, yeah. And we'll get to the features. We'll get to the features. Uh, but sorry, back to cruise control. So, um, this is one of the first songs that he mentions his daughter. Right. And so, um, it, it's it's pretty cool because, you know, if if you know if you are gonna compare it to its counterpart, it's 
you know, you're literally watching this man grow mm-hmm. from a 17 year old. And then <laughs> now, you know, he's a grown ass adult. Yeah. He has, you know, he, he has a child now. Uh-huh. And then, you know, I know he's humble, mm-hmm. but it doesn't, it just doesn't come off. Right. It just doesn't come off like that. And like, I know you were saying it's like, it's like a part of like, it comes with a genre. Right. To just, you know, talk about things like that. But it's like, man, like you just don't come off as humble anymore. Yeah. And yeah, so, definitely. Um, I don't know, but this one definitely, I did like this one. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm probably gonna, you know, sound like a, a scratch CD over here, but the, <laughs> the beats uh-huh. are nice. Oh yeah. On every song, right. this, this whole album beats are nice, but this one, um, definitely stuck out. Um, I don't know if it was because, uh, with his tone, it was like more like catchy. Right. So like, uh, more of like a radio hit, like you would say. Mm-hmm. Um, but I like this one. That's actually cool. I, I'm glad that you brought up that, uh, that point with his daughter. Cause it just adds like another layer to like the maturity of maybe of this song. Yeah. Um, maturity, not only in like the content, but also maturity in the sound. Um, oh yeah. I actually I give him props for kind of you know venturing off from the from the boom bap. Um, again, that's kind of what I was expecting. And could we maybe have done away with another kind of pop song that will actually start now? Yeah, we probably could have. Um, but I get I give him props for you know stepping out of that comfort zone. Yeah, it's, um, it definitely is a different Joey. Oh, definitely, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. And I I think on first listen I was a little disappointed with what we got, but the more I listened to it, the more it grew on me. I told you. No, you yeah, definitely. I I wasn't a hater when I first listened to it, but I was like, man, I expected so much more. But it, it definitely started to deliver the more I listened. Uh so yeah, so let's get to this trash ass song. Oh, uh man. Welcome back with Compella Gray and uh Chris Brown. Chris Prizzy bro. <laughs> oh, stop. Dude. Oh the my domestic god. Domestic violence abuser. Yeah. Oh, sorry, should I not say that? No, one hundred percent. This motherfucker needs to be called out every time his name Word. is mentioned. Why was this song made? Not only is the Chris Brown feature terrible, Capella Gray doesn't add shit. Joy Badass has like some of the most cringe lyrics on this shit. It, it was supposed to like come off as like some seductive ass song. I don't understand, but it did the opposite for me. This shit is gross. Yeah, so I mean, the song is literally about <laughs> Joey again with this poor dude that you hear in the beginning <laughs> yeah. in like the intro, mm-hmm. this poor dude soon to be fiance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh and it actually starts at the end of the uh track before it, one before of us it. yeah so there's this weird like so one of us is you know kind of like a boppy you know kind of song larry june has a really good feature on it, it it's kind of chill you know N- nice little yeah, it's song a vibe yeah definitely a vibe so then it has this weird skit that kind of like ends the song and some dude's calling him and he's like hey yo who is this <laughs> And then Joey puts on this weird voice, right? Was he's like, "Oh yes, that is I." Or he says some. Oh yeah, he's shit. like, "Are you?" What do you say? He's like, "Are you Joey?" Yeah. He's like, "Yes, it is I." <laughs> yeah. What? And then it leads into this fucking trash ass welcome back. It's I just don't understand the need for this song. Like we already have the radio friendly hit. What? Why is this here? I uh, I hate this song. To be honest, it seems really out of place. Definitely does. Oh my god, what does he say? Third verse. Oh, God. Uh, she want to suck me like oxtail right off the bone. <laughs> Shorty, and it's honor for cocktail. And, oh, my God. It just doesn't stop. She tells the pussy minds I can hit it anytime. Now that's the type of shit that a dude like. She keep the pussy wet all night. She grip it tight. She suck it and lick it right. I eat it like I got a big appetite. Uh, oh, dude, that's stop. That's fucking bars. <laughs> that's straight bars. What are you talking about? Why? Oh, this song is terrible. So real quick, Marcos, you said it was out of place. <laughs> he has a, he has like a very seductive song like this in 99 as well. He does. And so. Penny Royal? Yeah, but he doesn't have Chris yeah. Brown on it. Mm-hmm. True. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that one, that one's I, actually pretty pretty. I said too. I could do I could do this song if it was anyone but Chris Brown, but Chris Brown would just completely shit the bed for me. I I like the I like the the lyrics on this song like they're nasty and freaky and that <laughs> fucking, I could get down with that. Oh, but okay. Chris Breezy just tra- tra- when I say ruin the whole song, he literally solely ruined the whole song. Yeah, mm-hmm. no. Yeah, I mean it's a terrible it's a terrible feature. It's a terrible verse. It's uh, a terrible song. I, I couldn't hate really it. you know whatever that Capella Gray. Guy yeah, it didn't really that. seem like they just had kind of a little chorus. Yeah, you know? so know. it didn't really take anything away from it or add anything special to it. But mm-hmm. Chris Brown, bro, you just complete 
puts a dynamite on the building and lifts that shit up. Word. <laughs> yeah, dude. Destroyed so it. did you did you tune into his Ask Me Anything on Reddit, Ruben? Not live, but no. but I read a little bit of it, yeah. Did anybody call this out? <laughs> dude, actually, somebody did. So somebody commented. They were like, yo, why'd you put Chris Brown on this? And he had this comment. His reply was like, what the fuck? Why wouldn't I have Chris Brown? He's like one of the most talented artists of all time. And he said some shit like, what did he say? He said, uh, oh, I mean, I get it that you guys are judging him on his past. But I mean, look at anybody's past, you know, who's really perfect. It's like, bro. Uh. No, okay well you just think everybody's going around beating chicks you know like it, it just and then a part of his argument was oh and he's my friend so i was like oh okay now he's your friend that it just erases the fact that he's a fucking right, well, yeah. abuser. okay like, let's think about it really quick like okay you know he he's an abuser okay he's your friend okay that's he still came out with a trash ass feature man <laughs> you should have fucking when he sent you this you'd be like yeah no it's so, shocked so if he would have came correct then, then it would have been all absolved <laughs> If what? If he would have came correct, then his sins would be absolved. No, but it, at least, at least would have at least we would have been like, all right, at least it's a fire trap. <laughs> but uh, he's still in a piece of shit of abuser. But you know, well, right, speaking about right now, it's at least a fire trap. But no, <laughs> you got three check marks, bro. Like, or two. He's an abuser, and he gave you a shit fucking feature. Yeah, like, he should uh, be canceled. I so think twice already because we got this with Kodak and Mr. Morale. Yes, and then now we get it with Chris Brown. Joey Badass. Joey Badass. Enjoy yeah. Badass. What's up with all these talented lyricists and, you know. What you got, J. Cole? Out? Don't fuck this up. Yeah, come on, bro. J. Cole. Don't fucking. <laughs> Man, we're counting on you, bro. Don't bring in Tay K, bro. Murder <laughs> someone. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to fucking. Oh, we're going to fucking uh, YWN Mally or whatever it is. <laughs> You're stupid. And fucking feature, bro. All right. So, yeah, just kind of wanted to get those two out of the way. Um, other than that, you know, we, we definitely get the more polished kind of boom bap you know new york kind of sounds um shit i'll just tell you like right off the rip dude brand new 911 is so fucking good it is good oh dude that beat it's oh tell wet. me that's not a really good like uh 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 your bragging a good, really good bragging song oh 100 yeah, percent. really good bragging song it definitely is and especially when you have a west side gun feature like yeah. you know you're just gonna get grimy ass content out of that well the west side uh, west side gun feature isn't my favorite feature Really? Yeah, you didn't I like didn't, it? I didn't like that feature, no. Oh, man. It's because of the fucking noises he makes, man. And it... <laughs> boom. Boom. Yeah. Boom. Boom. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh... <laughs> Dog, come on. Just shut up and spit words, man. <laughs> that's like his fucking... That's like his trademark, though. It's just a whole bunch of, like, random-ass ad-libs and then just being like... Uh, yeah, but he could spit. Yeah. Oh, he 100% can. He could spit. Just spit more, bro. Like, don't actually spit. Like, and... <laughs> Spit fucking noises, spit words that have meaning. Word, word. <laughs> I, 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 I like this feature. I thought his feature, you know, I, he complimented this beat very well. I thought. Yeah, I mean, was this song about a drive by? <laughs> they asked some instances where pretty, they match drive bys, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and putting bodies in the trunk. Yeah, yeah like, dude. yo. <laughs> <laughs> That's an everyday lifestyle in the South Valley, baby. <laughs> in the South <laughs> But instead of a fucking 9 11, is a fucking. Uh, like a Monte Carlo or something? Monte Carlo, yeah. <laughs> Comparing Brooklyn to the South Valley, fam. <laughs> Yes, it is. Word. It's not Brooklyn, bro. It's outside. It's on fucking uh, Bridge and uh, fucking Isleta. <laughs> So another song where he uh, shouts out some more New York rappers is off the lyric. Look, I'm a flex. Do your best not to sweat the technique. Oh yeah, dude. That dude. um, Eric B and Rakim. Yeah, exactly. Oh, man. This he has all those subtle hints in every song, and I hopefully, I mean, I'm, I need to go through the whole verses and find out who else he's. You know, all these Easter eggs. Oh yeah. Uh, of who he references, but uh, I don't know if this is the first time. But this is uh he all he also uh you know shouts out his uh his homie Steez on this uh on this track too. We expose the secrecy screaming rest in peace to Steez. Yeah. And uh the thirteenth track on the album Survivor's Guilt is actually the first like full song that he's made about Capital Steez. Uh if you don't know, Capital Steez was one of the uh, original members of Pro Era. And um, you know, honestly, he was pretty much on the same trajectory, if not on a higher trajectory, than uh, Joey Badass, man. He came out out of the gate fucking Ooh. hot, man. He was, he had a ton of potential, um, but he killed himself in 2012. He uh, committed suicide by jumping off of a building. Um, I guess the uh, details around it are a little murky. It, it seemed like he had some kind of like mental health issues going on. Uh, really, really sad turnout, man. He, he had a ton of potential. Um, so... 
Survivor's Guilt is the first full track that we've had from Joey Badass about this. It's been 10 years, and this is the first time he's actually, you know, made a song about it. Um, man, this one, this shit hit hard. They, like, you could, I mean, you could definitely tell that they were close already, but, man, it, it's just crazy that 10 years later, you know, he still, like, feels like such a huge connection to him, you know, and um, it resonates with him so much that, you know, he made one a beautiful song out of it, you know? Yeah, fully agree. I mean, uh, I think he does like, uh, uh, but not to blame, but he does have a lot of, uh, he does put his whole, his whole success behind, you know, Steez too. And, you know, the whole, uh, upbringing of pro era and the image of himself is a credit to ski to Steez. Mm -hmm. So of course, like, you know, the title of the track is survivor's guilt knowing that he's made it this far and he doesn't have his homie here that is arguably better than him right. so doesn't have him here he's I, that's a feeling that i don't think will ever go away oh no Oof. so i was i was reading that the, that single was actually released on what would have been steez's 29th birthday <sighs> man and like you said like with the mental health in the you know in the beginning because um he actually mentions that mm -hmm. you know he he has a he has a line in there you see the truth about Stilo. He lacked the mental health, but try to seek that to pe or try to say that to people way back in 2012. Mm -hmm. and it's just like that's crazy because I mean, mental health didn't really start to like, you know, the the spotlight didn't hit it until like only like a couple years ago. Definitely. And so like it's just crazy because you just chalk it up to that back in the day, and they're just like, well, he was crazy. He was going through some shit. Yeah. Right. And get over it. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah. Get over it. And it's just like, nah. You, you can't even like shed light on it especially right. like for then and it's just it, it's just it's just sad because i mean like you said the first time you get something from him in you know the past decade mm -hmm. which is insane for how much he references him you know in this album alone i think you know he references him so many times so like i oh, can't yeah. even imagine like his other like previous work mm -hmm. you know since you know that tragedy so it i just think that's crazy that it took him this long to come out with something like on this lyric I, it kind of goes to show that arguably steve's was better because he says wishing i could have stopped him let alone know how he felt lyrically couldn't top him he was a dude with the belt Oof. which oh, is yeah. kind of fact if you go dig up uh steve's capital c's uh discography like the, the music that he does have out guy is insane man yeah guy would have been living uh, like uh, literally on top on par with kendrick lamar and j cole yeah Ooh. and drake he, he had the potential man he definitely did yeah and then you know he even gets into the uh he even gets to like the little scuffle that he had with steez's family uh he was trying to drop that uh king capital project and i guess the family just didn't approve of it so it was originally going to be released in 2017 and then it just never it got delayed 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 and then it just never released um so that's crazy. And, you know, like he says here, you know, he, he just wanted to get the music out. You know, he wanted the fans to listen to what he had been working on. It's, it, it's crazy, you know, the, the layers that this kind of had, you know? Yeah. And do you guys know anything about, um, he has a line in there and he says, uh, how people could accuse me for his death. Do you guys got anything yeah, on that? Yeah, I, I don't know anything about that. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I saw a rumor like years ago that, that, uh, People were speculating that he died because, or he committed suicide. He hadn't alive himself because uh, of the success of other members of Pro Era, including Joey Badass. Um, but I don't know how deep that rumor goes or how true it is, but that's the rumor I heard about it. Yeah. It could just be some Reddit uh, incel. So, but. <laughs> Word. <laughs> Pro probably what it is. I, I, I didn't know anything about that. I mean, that, that, that lyric kind of took me for a loop too because I, I wouldn't understand why Joey was, you know, kind of put to blame but yeah yeah it d doesn't make any sense to me yeah i guess i guess other than survivor's guilt you know we kind of just have a medley of tracks that are uh you know some of them definitely touch on you know some deeper topics um you know show me you know talk oh, about relationships and stuff fucking album bro dude oh my god men i trust dude bro. a fucking men i trust sample oh my god this has to be the best beat on the album though oh i love this shit I mean, that sample just with the, you know, this is basically like a bittersweet love song. Mm -hmm. And then just sample with that sample behind it. Yeah. Like Marco said, this is the best song. This, oh, the song is perfect. Definitely. And it came it came on after Welcome Back. You have yeah, this what the nasty ratchet ass shit. 
And then he has a song where he's like, so close your legs for a bit, baby. Let's open up. <laughs> like, and then it, it's just like such a heartfelt, like one-on-one emotional song. Like, man, <laughs> like complete opposites, complete polar opposites. But yeah, a shout out to Static Selecta again for, you know, making an amazing beat, man. It's, I'm probably sounding like a scratch CD saying this, but man, Static Selecta played some amazing production. Yeah, on this and it's whole not thing. the first time or second time that Static Selecta and Joey Baz worked together. I think Joey Badass is always on his, uh, oh yeah, always on his work. So it's fucking nice to see that he did a majority of this, uh, of this album. Yeah, definitely, definitely. He definitely he added that nice like New York touch to it. That dude's just the producer. Yeah, yeah. So so he he's like a DJ staple. <laughs> well, way better, but <laughs> way better. But he's like he gets like artists to get he he makes a beat and he's like all right. Gets these artists on them. Yeah. Those. Yeah. So whenever he releases his own albums, yeah, he'll he'll just compile a whole bunch of his beats and then you know recruit these artists to rap over them. Really cool. They're essentially like compilation albums, but just like pure grimy New York hip hop. Oof. Oh you guys man. Are gonna have to put me on. Yeah, dude. He he has the uh, Lucky Seven, and then he has um that Green Robot one. And we just literally were talking about it. <laughs> I know. We were extended play. Extended play. Extended play, dude. Black Thought. Black Thought's verse on Bird's Eye View. Oh, yeah. You're the one like, that put me on that song, dude, too. Black Thought has a nasty-ass verse Oh, on my that. God. Like three or four minutes of straight bars. It's insane. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. So if you're interested at all in Static Selected, you 100% need to go back and listen to like his quote-unquote solo projects. Um, other than that, it's just kind of like a medley of... No, we could talk about you, you, you Logi? Eulogy. 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 That, probably my favorite beat off the whole album. Eulogy's nice. Yeah. I was going to say it. It's probably my favorite beat as yeah. well. So sick. And then he comes out with uh, with Never Did College. I still raise dollars for tuition. You could buy my album for like $8. Oh, best money you ever spent. Yeah. Best <laughs> money you ever spent. The best money you ever lend. Lend. Oh, Ooh. that's right. He hits it with both of them. Yeah, yeah that's nice. That's yeah, that nice. Hard. Yeah, what what I I forget what song it is, but he also has that lyric where he's like dropped out of dropped out of school, still voted most likely to succeed. Oh, yeah, he does. <laughs> that's that, pretty yeah. nice. I, I I fuck with that. But oh, since we're on eulogy, no, no, uh, let me say it because I think oh. it goes hard. I think it. Go, all right, you say it since no, I said it. No, ahead. Keenan, you you got it. You, you got to say because I just said I just said a fire ass verse. All right, spit it. <laughs> so <laughs> that whole that whole verse is hard. That one line, he has a corny line where he says, I'm a hip hop a pot. <laughs> it's like, what? You gotta, what? <laughs> you gotta say it. He says, swimming mainstream like a hungry hip hop a potamus. <laughs> you ain't great white guy. You just a great white lie with great <laughs> ties to what seemed to be a great white guy. Cut it. <laughs> Cut. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> that part, man. Oh, that shit goes hard. Stop. I don't know what you're talking about, dude. Oh, my God, man. It, it It's kind of clever, like, with the whole, oh, he's mainstream. He's swimming like a fucking hippo. But, like, <laughs> like the delivery just feels so awkward to it, you know? I, 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 I agree. I got you, Keenan. Thank you. I got oh, you. Thank I got you, guys. You. But the, the lyrics in this one were tied because, like, kind of like a little step back from that lavish lifestyle mm-hmm. and this was this song was this song was for the regular people definitely the nine to fives yeah. mommy's in the six and chills man there See, we go the thing i think the thing that we do all agree on is the fucking third verse or the outro on this song with his for some reason i don't know why the fuck he auto-tuned his voice yeah oh, yeah so i originally thought that this was the uh jit appearance and no. i was like wait what the fuck? I thought this was like happening later on the album. Like, does he have two features on this? But no, it's just Joey Badass like pitched. Uh, what what was the purpose of this? I don't get it. I don't know. I did not like it at all. That's the thing I have about this song is the fact that he auto tuned his voice like really annoyingly mm-hmm. towards the end of the of the track. Yeah. So that's the thing I don't have it. The the corny verses I get by, but not the auto tune man. Mm-hmm. But we should talk about that Jid feature because that's probably the best feature off the whole album, in my opinion. I think Jid nails it. On his verse, bro, like, he killed it. No, I agree. It's it's one hundred percent the best feature on this album. I love the lyric uh, with the safety on the semi, like Xavier McKinney. <laughs> Dude, like me just saying it like this sounds fresh. Like he has such a good flow, and he's just able to like bend these words, and then he follows it up with "Giant World Dudes Mind Too Many." Like he just has like all Dude. these cool little like inflections, you know, that rhyme in different ways. Yeah, that's why I think he has the best features because he has delivery on his punchlines. <laughs> Oh, dude. 
he he's top tier, man. Yeah, top tier. I need to listen to more of his music, actually. He he ha- he has a he has a decent body of work. Um, he has what's the one the the dream story or something, the forever story. The forever, forever story is a really good really good I'll project for me. I have to listen to. It. I've only ever heard his features. Yeah, uh, I think he's actually gonna have something coming out soon. Well, I, I think I saw. It. Oh, dude, I'm 100 percent on that, man. Jid, Jid, Jid has always come correct, dude. I don't think I've ever heard him slack on anything. What record is he on? Like, what label? Dreamville. He's on Dreamville. Yeah. God damn. He's on Dreamville. So. I if he's, been, he's not. Do you know if he's from New York? No, I think he's Southern. Let's see. Destin Root. What the fuck? Oh, East Atlanta. Uh, Atlanta so, rapper, huh? Yeah, yeah that was grimy as fuck. <laughs> Word. Southern. And you know, this song didn't really like catch me at first. Um, cause this is already what, this is already the 11th track, you know, we still have three more after this and it, it's, it kind of started to lose me a little bit, especially because the beat was good, but it wasn't anything like super interesting. So I was like, you know, uh, you know, just kind of getting through it. But then man, Jid comes through and Jid is just so good, man. He, he has this great flow and I love his voice and his cadence, man. He, he definitely knows how to like pick the en- pick up the energy of a song. Yeah. He knows how to flow with the beat really well. Oh, dude. So, Skates over it. Yeah. So that flow was nice. I didn't like one of those last lines. <laughs> when, he, when he's like, if you're going to ride with me, then ride with Ride with me, got a Glock nine, and God with me. Uh, I was like, well, I mean, that's kind of fast. Uh, that was kind of corny. <laughs> that was kind of cool. No, it's kind of corny. <laughs> but I mean, he was my second favorite feature. Oh, okay. Oh, don't so tell who's me Chris Breezy's your first, bro. <laughs> bro. That's crazy. <laughs> no. Who was your first? Larry June. Oh, you like Larry June? I love that verse. Oh, okay. That whole part, and uh, that's the in the song "One of Us." Okay. Um, that's actually one of my top songs. All because nice. of that. All because of that verse. All because okay. of Larry June. Okay. I like the way he flowed. I don't even know who that man is. I didn't bother <laughs> to look him up, but that flow over that beat was nice. You did it. I'm the type that let a bad bitch walk away. Bro. Because <laughs> that ain't my main focus. I'm on bigger things. Okay. All right, Larry. Yeah, nice. That's how every king should be. <laughs> Bro, 10,000 in my sock and I'm rocking shorts. <laughs> that's clean, Fuck dude. Yeah. <laughs> that's so clean. That's yeah. corny. Oh, get shit. out of here! <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. Yeah, and that's the thing. He's not like super technical. He ain't dropping like no. lyrical spiritual shit. But he just rides, like you said, he rides it smooth. Yeah, just smooth. Mm-hmm. And so, do y'all know who this man is? <laughs> no, I actually don't know. No, I don't. I've, know. I've never listened to Larry no. June. So, right. well, so that's why I, that's why I stepped aside from like hip hop because it's so fucking oversaturated. Where there's like so many rappers on the come up and shit. It's just like hard to keep. I had a full time job, dog. Not until you, <laughs> our our listeners, y'all make this our full time job, then I'll go into every fucking genre and learn Word. every fucking artist. There and listen go. to their whole yeah. discography. Hell yeah. But Support our Patreon. Get, exactly. <laughs> listen to our Spotify and make this my full time job so I can go in here and listen up who the fuck Larry June is. <laughs> Word. So real quick, I was I was gonna bring it up earlier. I hate how pretty much the intro to Welcome Back. Uh uh-huh. I hate how it starts off at the end out of one of us oh that's like damn this was like one of my favorite songs and then what is this <laughs> then he fucks it up oh then it starts off with that trash interlude that eventually leads into welcome back yeah this one's like very bouncy and wavy too it was that's that's why i think i, I think that's why i vibed with it yeah yeah again static killed this one uh he also produced uh make me feel and these two songs are very similar in the sense that they have like a very soulful like um vocal sample yeah uh but make me feel was just oh my god dude make me feel is probably dude, a top three prezi on my wrist call that bro. joe biden bro <laughs> Sheesh. my first playthrough of this this album that was the line that stuck out the most. That, was, that was it bro, that shit was hard i was saying that all week <laughs> said keep the game at bay like the 49ers <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> yeah no so in this one um this is the first shout out to steve's i mean it, something as simple as just you know just rest in peace steez Mm -hmm. you know and uh and june yeah so i um, it's probably just because like i'm a nujibis fanboy yeah but i thought that this was a reference to nujibis because in the past he's referenced him Uh uh-huh and i think he's actually rapped on a nujibis beat like a while back um that's what i thought it was but i guess it's junior because he also references that in survivor's guilt yeah junior b or something like that I, I don't know anything about that. No, yeah, yeah no, I, I don't either. Well, I mean, but the line was, you know, rest in peace to Steez in June. They put the battery inside my back. Yeah. And so, I mean, that's pretty hard. 
Yeah. Uh, just to keep him going. Goddamn. Yeah, hell yeah. So we got to talk about a single that he dropped, the Zip Codes. A fucking smooth mm, ass dude. fucking track. Smooth. Oh my God. That jazz beat. <laughs> that jazz beat. Yeah. And that's Kirk Knight. Oh, Kirk it is Knight Kirk Knight. Yeah. Killed that beat. Yeah. He has some of my favorite uh, 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 bars on this uh, on this track. One of them is, could have made the Goonies clap, but masked up like MF Doom. Don't know what truly had. Rest in peace. Mm. He also says something funny. He's like, 100,000 hours and you dudes only masturbate. He also pros <laughs> yeah. after procrastination. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god man he he has some funny ass lines on this too yeah, okay his alib is the is literally haha <laughs> yeah okay so that oh, brings me up to one okay no. so one of the uh, you guys want to talk about corny all right so the last track written in stars is actually really nice like this has a cool little switch up it sounds like it's played with like some live drums you know it sounds like there's a big like live instrumentation back to it uh it's actually a really good way to close out the album yeah, it was. I actually yeah, really I like this. Yeah, it's a really uh, nice also, outro track. Mm -hmm. Also featuring Diddy again. Also, yeah, Diddy. And I guess I don't mind him too much on this one. It's not terrible. Obviously not. I'm not going to point him out. See, that's funny because <laughs> I didn't mind him. <laughs> that's funny because I didn't mind him on on the opener. I'd rather have him on the opener than the closing, but it's cool like he wraps it up like this. Right. But I do prefer the opening than the closing. Oh, okay. From Diddy. I feel you. I feel you. Um, That's funny. We're on polar opposites with that. Um, but I have to say it. I have to say it. <laughs> say my stock like a teenage cock. It stays up. <laughs> Why? Oh my God. You weren't bricked up when you were a teenager, bro. <laughs> like, damn. Yeah. I don't need to hear Joey badass rapping about it. That's the point. <laughs> it's a joke. Fuck. Stay I swimming like a hip hop apotamus. <laughs> what does the ad lib say after that? What's the ad -lib? That's why I brought it up because the, okay. the, the ad lib is the same thing. It's like his little ha ha <laughs> attached oh. to it. I don't give a fuck if you added that, man. Just cut that bar out. Oh my God, dude. That's just a fire ass bar. What Jesus Christ. About? Yeah, that's one thing about Joey. He's not scared to <laughs> say the most like obnoxious, like fucking. I'm a top three MC. <laughs> <laughs> Teenage Cox. <laughs> So he actually has another reference to a uh, another artist who has since passed away, uh, XXX, on Head High. Oh, does he really? I think I saw it, actually. What's the lyric? What? I thought you'd be all over this. I know. I thought That's you'd be boy. all over that. It's I the whole X. second verse. What? I probably... Yeah. It's a whole song. <laughs> it's, a whole... <laughs> it's a whole song. Yeah. S spit it. Spit he, the reference. You know, the, the first verse is, you know, just kind of talking about how, you know, time doesn't wait for anybody. It's, you know, kind of a... Um, Anyone like, can get it at any time. Essentially, yeah. And then that leads into the second verse, which talks about X. And, I mean, he says it explicitly right here, you know. Uh, took a trip to Miami that March, a couple of weeks right before my daughter got born, uh, to meet up with this kid by the name of X. Had to go to him because he was on house arrest, nonetheless. And then he's just talking about how he, like, in a way kind of mentored him, you know, and how he was saying, like, I gave him oh, fair criticisms yeah. and any other artist would push it away, but he didn't. So and then oh. he even hopped on the track. With yeah. X for his album. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, uh, yeah. And then again, another reference shit had me reminiscent, had me thinking about Stilo. Okay. Um, so yeah, because, uh, yeah, one of my all time favorite X's song is infinite infinity, 88, 888. And that has an extremely hard fucking verse by Joey Badass. You guys need to listen to it, man. It's so, it's it's just it's off the question mark album. Just like yeah, yeah. So I mean, I, yeah, I think it, I just went it went over my head, honestly. I mean, it's a little heartfelt, so I guess I won't go too into it. But again, you know, referencing his uh, friendships with uh, very problematic people. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I guess we won't speak ill of the dead. So yeah, but accident <laughs> unalive himself. He got. Yeah, but he beat his chick. Oh yeah, pregnant. <laughs> oh, pregnant chick. Pregnant chick. Oh, is it, okay, yeah, yeah. So that's uh, fucked. Yeah, I guess that kind of touches on the points that I wanted to bring up. Does anybody else have any other songs, bars, features, anything else they want to talk about? No, I just think that he could have had a lot more features from Pro Era, but that's about it. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, again, we got the beats, but you know, it would have been nice mm -hmm. to get some features. No, oh, yeah, I'm good. Uh, Keenan, go ahead and start us off. Final thoughts, final score, and top two tracks. All right. So, like I said in the beginning, you know, I 
I, I listened to the, the, the mixtape, 1999, before I dove into this album because I thought there was going to be, like, you know, some type of relation between the two. Mm-hmm. Um, and so after listening to 1999 all week, um, I can see how a, any, like, true fan of Joey would have high expectations for this. Um, although a, although I didn't, I, I, I didn't, um, it was just, it was cool to hear his growth. Mm -hmm. I mean, you again, like I've been saying, you can you can tell he's a 17 year old kid on the come up. Like, I don't know if he was already big at the time um, of the mixtape, but you can tell, you know, he's a kid on the come up. Whereas in this one, you know, he talks about the glamorous lifestyle, you know, about making million dollar deals and buying a 911 and having the house, having all this. And so, like, in this album, I felt like he just kind of plateaued. Mm. Kind of like he he made it, mm-hmm. he made it. So again, to see that growth was cool, but I feel like I don't know if he did enough. I guess the boom bap was there. It was definitely just more refined. Um, his tone, his tone was nice. You could tell the man has age on him. You know, it's even referenced in the album. Um, <laughs> that was pretty cool. But I feel like again, I just didn't think he, I didn't think he took it to like that next level, like his counterpart. Mm-hmm. So I mean, that being said. Uh, my top three tracks were Course Show Me How, One of Us, and Zip Codes. Nice. And after all that, I got to give it seven and a half out of ten. Oh, wow. That's higher than I thought you'd That's get higher it. than I okay. thought you were going to give it to. Yeah. No, no, it. yeah, because, I mean, in the end, I mean, me, I, mm-hmm. I liked it for what it was. Right. You know, because I didn't have any expectations. Um, so, to me, it, this was still this was still a bop, you know. Um, a lot of songs made the playlist, so I'm gonna I'm gonna ride with it, and I'm I'm excited to you know learn a lot from you guys. So <laughs> it's gonna be cool to go back and you know listen to like the like this whole like pro era group, and you know you guys were telling me about Capital Steves before we came in here, and so like yeah. it's gonna be cool to like go off and kind of like see everybody else, and like even his like Joey's like earlier work instead of just 1999. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so for me, uh, I was I was super. Uh, anticipated for this album i had high expectations for this album for a while especially when i found out that it was uh tied in some way shape or form to 1999 and uh a lot of the tracks here um fell short compared to 1999 but because he matured a lot and knowing that with time that he was able to uh still put out produce really good written music and even uh come together with such a, a talented producer and still produce a really good body of work. Like it satisfied my taste to it, but you know, it's just, it's just like, you know, when you hear Drake coming out with an album, you're like, Oh shit, this is going to be fucking lit. <laughs> and then he just comes out with honestly, never mind, you know, <laughs> shout out to our old <laughs> podcast. <episode. Word. laughs> but you're just like, what the fuck is this? Oh, uh, not to that level, but I was just like, I was expecting a whole lot more out of it but nothing less like it's still really good he still has his funny ass bars he still r- writes really well he flows really sweet i think the one thing that he lacks on on this album is like i said his features man he just lacks his features on this album that's honestly it mm-hmm. so i'll give it an eight out of ten okay yeah an eight out of ten and my top three tracks are show me is number one for sure that nice. I, I was saying that for the longest fucking time eulogy and then zip codes okay um you know, I'm probably going to sound like a scratch CD <laughs> saying this. I'm, I'm basically going to parrot what you said. Um, I had, you know, high expectations going into this too, you know, given the um, tie-in with 1999. Um, did it fully deliver? No, not necessarily. But with that being said, I do think this was a step in the right direction. You know, it's definitely a more mature sound for him. Um, and I think if this is like the predecessor to maybe another album that kind of explores maybe different sounds or maybe, you know, explores different topics, then, you know, it, I, I think it's it was definitely an album that needed to be made. Um, you know, I, again, I, I kind of I, I uh, appreciate what he did with like Welcome Back and uh, Cruise Control. I appreciate the fact that he was able to kind of like step out of his comfort zone and, you know, try something a little bit more poppier, you know, a little bit more glitzier. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, other than that, you know, it's just more of kind of like a refined 
boom bap sound, which is good, but it isn't anything new. You know, it, it, it isn't like Keenan said, it's just kind of a plateau. It's it's good, but it isn't taking, you know, any any other risks, you know, aside from a couple tracks. Um, but yeah, I'm, I mean, it's solid. It's solid for what it is. So I'm very excited to see what he comes out with after this. Uh, my final score for it is going to be a seven. Um, and my top three tracks are going to be number three, show me, uh, number two, zip codes and number one, make me feel sick. With yeah. It. Yeah. And like, honestly, it was kind of hard to like, it, it was kind of hard to narrow down just the three. Um, you know, obviously have to give like shout outs to uh survivor's guilt, uh, eulogy, written oh, yeah, in the stars. Yeah. There's like, so much good tracks on this album, dude. Yeah. It, it, it was really hard to, to yeah. pick a top three for sure. Okay, and that does it. That wraps up our review of 2000 by Joey Badass. If you've heard it, let us know what you think. If you haven't heard it, give it a listen. Then let us know what you think. Um, yeah, I guess that basically wraps it up. Till next time, we out. Bye. Peace. Peace.